Hi everyone, hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Um, we're about to get our live started momentarily. Today we're gonna to be talking about young people and sexual health and uh, you know youth and STI data. And I will apologize in advance. I'm having some bad cat allergies and so might be sneezing more than usual, but I will try my best for things transpire. I'm just getting my colleagues in the room. Hey, Corey, take two. What's up? Yes, take two. We're in there. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> How's your week been? It's been pretty good. This week I actually feel like it flew like really quickly. Like this week, that's not it. Really, it was like Monday, Friday. I'm, I don't know what I was doing for it to fly so fast, but this week really feel like it like zapped by. Which I'm not complaining about because now it's the weekend. So yeah, I was about to say hopefully it's a good thing. Yeah. So it's definitely perfect for me, but still, it did. It definitely feels like it went by really quickly. All right, looks like Whitman Walker is joining. As soon as, I wonder <laughs> as, soon as Instagram lets them up. They will be joining. <laughs> so, what were you saying? I wonder if we can start doing this on um, on Facebook too, because especially this would be a great topic for um, for mm -hmm. like ballrooms on Facebook. They don't have they don't have that here, but I can go live in that group up to the youth that are a part of that ballroom scene. And um, but it's on Facebook though, so I wonder if we could do. That. And that sounds great. We should definitely talk about it um, with our team and make it happen. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to my ass about that. Awesome. So, okay. welcome everyone. Uh, during the past few months, Whitman Walker's Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to include the social media platform. We cover various topics about uh, HIV and STIs, sexual health practices, access to care, social determinants of health, and public health interventions. The community health team is here to educate and support you. Uh, my name is Jewel, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Corey Haskett, of course. Um, I use his pronouns. Um, today, I'll be covering facts about STIs. So some of the facts are STDs are common, especially among young people. There are 26 million new sexually transmitted infections in 2018 in the United States. About half of these infections are in people between the ages of 15 and 24. So those are youth ages. Youth in America is between the ages of 15 and 24 for like program reasoning. Young people are at a greater risk of getting ST, um, STDs for several reasonings. Young women's bodies are biologically more prone to STDs. Some young people do not, do not get um, the recommended STD tests. Many young people are hesitant to talk openly and honestly with a doctor or a nurse about their sex lives. Not having insurance or transportation can make it more difficult for young people to access STD testing. Some, and as well as some young people have more than one sex partner. Um, new estimates show that about 20 million new sexually transmitted infections in the United States each year. Young people between the ages of 15 and 24, again, youth ages, account for about 50% of all new STDs. All they, all, all they represent is just 25% of sexually experienced, of, they only represent 25% of the sexually experienced population. 46% of American high school students have had sex, sexual intercourse and potentially are, risk, are at risk for HIV and other STDs. Get yourself tested for HIV and and tell others you did. Sign up at and there is a link um and it's called update your status. In 2012, gonorrhea rates, well this is a little bit dated, but 
that they don't really update this stuff a lot. That's one of the problems I think that we actually are having and seeing when it comes to youth and STIs. In 2012, gonorrhea rates were highest among adolescents and young adults. In 2012, the highest rates were observed among women aged of 20 to 24 years old and um, 15 through 19. The CDC and prevention estimates that, are, that there's more than 110 million STIs among men and women in the United States. This mostly includes both new and existing infections. The annual number of new infections is roughly equal among teen, among teen girls and teen guys. Teen girls at 51% and teen guys at 49%. HPV accounts for the majority of preventable STIs in the United States of America. Six in 10 sexually active high school students reported using condoms through their most recent sexual encounter. One in four teens contracted a sexually transmitted disease every year. So that's one in four, which is pretty high. Less than half adults of age, age 18 to 44 have ever been tested for STDs other than HIV and AIDS. Resources, where can they get tested? There are places that offer teen-friendly, confidential, and free STD testing like Whitman Walker Health. This means that no one has to find out even if you've been tested. Visit Get Tested to find an STD um, testing location near you, or you can just go to Whitman Walker, of course. Um, yeah, so. Would you like to? Awesome. Thanks so much for all of that data and um, stats. Uh, super important to know. And uh, yeah, I think we want to give a little bit of context for some of those numbers. So one barrier to helping young people better understand sexual health is that sex education is not uniform across the United States. Uh, according to Planned Parenthood, only 29 states in D.C. mandate sex education in school. So in many states, you might learn a lot about abstinence or refraining from sex and uh, nothing about birth control. Uh, and, you know, that kind of policy has its uh, cause and effects, right? So according to the Gut, Gut, Maker, or Gut Maker Institute on Reproductive Health and Policy, uh, 39 states in the District of Columbia mandate sex education and or HIV education. Uh, another 36 states and DC allow parents the option to remove their children from instruction on sexual health and sexual education altogether. 39 states and DC require provision of information on abstinence. So again, uh, a lot of information being shared about not having sex at all. Uh, of those 39 states though, 28 of them require that abstinence be stressed, like very um, emphasized in class. And then 11 states and DC require that abstinence be covered. So it's important to you know, recognize all the different outlets for practicing safer sex and abstinence is one of them. Uh, 20 states in DC require provision of information on contraception. So uh, learning about using condoms and barriers and uh, you know what kind of birth control options are out there, whether you're using the pill or an IUD or a, a vaginal ring insert or getting the implant in your arm, there's so many options. Another 26 states and DC mandate both sex education and HIV education. Uh, only two states mandate sex education altogether. And then there's 11 states who only mandate HIV education. So there's a lot of uh, differences between what people are being taught depending on where they grew up or where they were born. Uh, another barrier that many students don't offer, that, that many people face is that places don't really offer LGBTQ inclusive sex education. And as one of our, our younger generations more largely identify as LGBTQ and non-binary, and we just see more people who are coming out at younger ages or gender expansive, uh, we are really doing a disservice to their health and well-being by not making LGBTQ inclusive sex ed more of the standard. Um, you know, LGBTQ inclusive sex education is required in California, Colorado, New Jersey, Oregon, Rhode Island, Washington, and DC. Washington, the state, and District of Columbia, DC. Uh, but at the same time, uh, seven, seven southern states either prohibit any sex education from being discussed that uh, allows for even questions being answered about LGBTQ identities and relationships, or actually just require that sex educators try to frame the LGBTQ identities and relationships as being negative. So again, there's this uh, barrier at the, the state level um, 
that doesn't allow people to learn what they actually need to learn to thrive and be sexually educated adults. Uh, I think another thing that we see uh, working specifically in our uh, work with Walker and uh, testing vulnerable populations in terms of uh, sexual orientation identities and whatnot is that if you went somewhere else and they're not asking you kind of questions about the types of sex that you're having, people can't properly treat you. So you could get an STI uh, in your throat, for example, if you were uh, having oral sex, but you didn't uh, have sex anywhere else. And if you go to a doctor who's not asking you, like, did you have oral sex or did you have insertive sex or did you have uh, anal sex, like, they're not going to know to test you in your throat. They might just test you um, below the belt to see uh, what you might have had sexually because they've assumed what kind of sex you've had. So it's, it's little things like that that are, um, you know, not always caught in sexual education and uh, it's even harder to catch when there isn't a uniform standard for sex education. But again, what Walker is here to help. Uh, if you have any questions that we can uh, offer insight or answers to, please give us a call at the number pinned in the comments. It's 202-797-4439. And uh, you can also use that same number to get an appointment for uh, STD testing or STI testing. Or is there anything you'd like to add before we give our COVID uh, information update? Um, no, I think, you know, we covered a lot. Um, I hope it was helpful. And moving forward, you know, we have some new things coming for everybody. Yes, definitely. Um, so before we go, we want to give you a few reminders about COVID-19 and vaccines. Uh, if you've already been vaccinated, that's really awesome. Uh, you've taken a really important step to preventing yourself and your loved ones and your communities from getting sick with COVID. Uh, and as more and more variants continue to fly around, uh, it's super important that you use this, uh, you know, most impactful form of protection against COVID-19. While the vaccine isn't going to prevent you from getting COVID altogether, it will prevent you from experiencing serious illness, uh, hospitalization, and death from COVID. So that said, a lot of mask mandates have been uh, lifted recently. Uh, so just, you know, stay alert, be mindful of who you're sharing uh, closed indoor space with. If you're indoors and it's tight, definitely want to wear a mask. So still travel with your mask, be prepared to use it. Uh, but if you haven't been vaccinated and you're looking for an appointment, you can call in Walker Health at 202-207-2480. We've got, um, you know, a vaccine available, but everyone uh, in the U.S. who is ages 12 and up is eligible to receive a vaccine. And if you can't uh, reach us to make an appointment, you can call uh, 1-855-363-0333 if you are a D.C. resident. Again, that's 1-855-363-0333. And you can track the speed of the COVID-19 vaccination lines by visiting coronavirus.dc.gov slash don't wait. For Maryland residents, you can learn more about uh, the, vaccine <laughs> the vaccine distribution process or schedule a vaccine appointment at covidlink.maryland.gov or by calling one 855 64 6829. Again, that's 1 855 634 6829. And then if you live in uh, the Montgomery County area or the Prince George's County area, there's an online registration vaccination portal that you can use. Um, but you can also call uh, the Montgomery County office at 240 777 0311. And finally, for Virginia residents, if you need to learn more about the vaccination distribution process or schedule an appointment, visit vaccinate.de vaccinate.virginia.gov or call 877-829-4682. And uh, for our final, final folks, if you haven't been vaccinated and you're not looking for an appointment, uh, please continue to follow CDC guidelines for mask wearing, quarantining, social distancing, and the like. Uh, but it's very important that you do get a vaccine or at least discuss uh, some of your hesitations with a trusted friend or uh, with a medical provider, preferably as well, <laughs> and uh, just get your questions answered. Uh, but if you do not want an appointment, that's, you know, that's your choice. And uh, please just be sure to follow the, the, the mask wearing guidelines, the distancing guidelines, and uh, be mindful of who you share space with. Uh, maybe always check in with people if they've been vaccinated or not, so you can decide what's the best way to keep yourself healthy. Uh, and finally, happy Friday, everyone. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Whitman Walker, and check our website uh, at www.whitman-walker.org for the latest information. And uh, call us at 202-797-4439 for any resources. Please also follow our Whitman Walker family pages at Real Talk DC underscore and No Filter DC. Wishing you all a happy Friday and beautiful weekend. <laughs>